Oh no, my underpants and my t-shirt are heavily soiled and yet there is no power. What will I do? Fortunately, I have this power bank and the miraculous USB-powered washing machine. Okay, right, well let's uh, unbox this and see what we get. So these do seem to be all over eBay. It seems to be a multi-function washing machine with rotating blades. Let's whip it out. There are no instructions. But it does say in the box, it says ABCD, automatic turbine cleaning, ultrasound and bubble cleaning. 30 minutes to clean, 10 minutes to reboot after power outage. Does that mean it's got a 10 minute cool, cool down time? Not really sure. Please connect to USB directly while working. Products automatically wash clothes according to procedures, ultrasonic, vibration and turbine cleaning. Right, doesn't include the washing bucket. Um, so you have to stick it to the inside of the washing machine, the, the bucket. And it says soak lightweight clothes with proper amount of water and uh, connect the laundry power after putting in detergent. That seems reasonable enough. So what happens if I plug this in to this USB power supply? So plugging it in now, this button is flashing. There's, there is only one button. It spins. Ah. What is that? A. B also just spins. C, it vibrates. D, there's something vibrating in this. Okay, right, I'm going to set a bucket up with my sexy panties and we'll see just exactly how much this can actually handle. This might make a mess. I'm going to put a towel down to try and absorb any secretions from the container and we'll see what happens. So I'll be with you in a moment. Okay, I think Clive's laundry is ready to go after one slight instant. If any washers, nuts and bolts or any debris appear, it's because I dropped an entire tub of nuts and bolts into the water. That was really badly timed. Not to worry, they're all out and drying now. So let's get the power on. Is this thing going to spray water everywhere? I'm going to put my hand above it just in case. Hold on a second. Oh, it's not bad, it's not bad. It's swirling things around. In go my panties. Uh, they're floating at the top. That's all right. They will eventually go down. Okay, it's now into extreme panty shredding. Oh no, it's going to spin in our direction. I didn't realize it's spanning two directions. Right, what about what about if I add a double XL t-shirt in? Okay, at this point in time I may have put too much in, but at least it is stirring the water. Uh, it's not really churning the things about too much. There is maybe a, an unusually high clothing to water ratio here. Oh, more panty shredding action going on. Yeah, I get the feeling this is designed for very small Chinese people who don't wear double XL sweatshirts. So uh, let's try. Oh, it's definitely agitating stuff around. What if I try the other functions? So I'm pressing the button. Not sure what that mode is. Next button. That's the sonic function that is vibrating stuff. It is having a profound effect. And the next mode is the... It makes bubbles. Oh, I get it. So this is a wee air pump in it in this remote. I'll just put this out of the way so it's not so loud. Um, so it's actually pumping air along the outer silicon sleeve that the cable is actually down the inside of. Uh, press the button again. That's off. I think I prefer the, the whirling action more than anything else. But I do think you'd need a lot more water in here. Right, tell you what, just hold on a moment. I'm just going to add more water. Okay, that does appear to be a bit better, now that it's got more water in it. Uh, the water is actually starting to look quite murky, which is surprising, because that washing was actually freshly laundered. Well, that's annoying. 
maybe it's just that it's cloud or, or dirt, well, either dirt or tiny bubbles. Uh, this isn't terribly helpful, is it? All, you, all you're seeing here is, uh, yeah, stuff floating about in bubbles. This isn't terribly good uh, video content, is it really, in that aspect? Right, tell you what, I'll leave it running for a while. And then I'll tell you what happens, then we'll take it to bits. But the moment I can tell you that it does this alternate direction thing to agitate the clothing around. But then it does, it goes through the next cycle, it goes through the vibration. Let me just emulate that by pushing this button. So, it goes into the vibration mode. It really does. It, it actually vibrates this with a lot of force. I wonder where that's a lot of the cleaning effect is coming from. And then it does the bubbling, which... Well, I'm not sure what the bubbling's for. It creates bubbles. It's very pretty. I think it's more shown than anything else. That it's just basically making it look as though it did a good job by creating bubbles. When in reality, most of the work seems to be done by the vibration and the uh, and the agitation. And it is certainly agitating. Right, tell you what, this could get boring very quickly. So uh, I shall just cut to the chase. Uh, let's get the bucket out of the way and take this thing to bits. Okay, dokie, this video is not going to plan. That bucket of water went in a random direction. My work trousers have pouch pockets. They have a surprisingly large capacity for liquid. And I'm very glad that my Cat S61 phone is completely waterproof because things would have been just worse. Uh, the kitchen floor is very clean now, though. Right, moving on. The first thing I'm noticing here is that the pipe, they've got a silicon pipe down here that the air flows down the inside of to do the bubble thing, the pointless bubble thing. I don't know why they're doing that. I think it's just for show. That also ports water back to the control unit. That doesn't seem like a good idea. We shall open it and see what the inside looks like. This sounds like it's got water in it, but I could be wrong. Let's see if we can uh, get it open. I'm guessing this might come off. Not really sure. I've not tried. It might just burst. Maybe this is not what you're supposed to do. But it does look like it might. It does look like it's lifting, but it might be wrong. Maybe I'm just ripping the, the guts out the inside right now. I don't see another way to get this. I mean, the these feet probably hide screws, but or it could be glued shut. That'd be terrible. Let's uh, keep trying it like this and just see if it comes off. If it doesn't come off, I shall abandon this. Mm, I think about to abandon it. I am about to abandon that. That is not moving. I think that was just luck. Let's see if these come off. I think they're glued. They are glued. Okay, let's twist it. Let's pull it. Oh. Uh, let's get another bit of towel in because it's very, very wet. Is it coming out? What have we got here? Oh, I wonder if there's a screw hole. Hold on, let's see if I... Can see a strange shape there. No, this doesn't feel conducive. This is this is not going to plan. Tell you what, you know what? I shall pause momentarily until I've actually managed to open this thing because uh, things are not going to plan. And back very quickly because brute force one apparently. Uh, the screws are hidden under here, but those feet were glued in possibly to try and seal the screw holes. Let's see how well this thing has uh, held up water-wise. I can see a couple of holes here, but I think they're for letting the air out for the bubbling effect. What am I expecting to find in here? I'm expecting to find in this the vibratory pump thing, the vibratory thing, and the sort of spinner motor, and that's more or less it. I don't think there's going to be too much more. Is this thing glued together as well? The screws are more or less out. Oh. Right. One moment, please. I do not recommend that you open yours. It's quite destructive. It's very destructive. Um, it's full of water. Around these cheap little motors, uh, here's the vibratory motor you'd often find in, uh, well, I was going to say ladies' toys, but men's toys as well. So that little thing usually goes in here and provides strong vibration. Uh, loads of grease around this bit, that, uh, the rotating fin here. Okay, there's not really much in there, is there? There's the air inlet. Where does the air... Oh, the air bubbler goes around the outer layer here. Uh, but then there's this big... Oh, that that's that bit there. Okay, it, it's kind of like they've tried making it waterproof by gluing it together, but there's gaps in it everywhere, look of it. 
largely because I've stuck a screwdriver into it. The thing is, for the water, though, that's the main thing to note. It's not particularly waterproof. Let's take a look at this bit here, and I'm going to have to switch to a different screwdriver for this one, just because the screws are quite deep. They're deep. Is this going to be full of water as well? Everything's full of water. I will say that a while ago there was a kickstart about an amazing washing machine that basically looked like they were sticking a, a vibrator into water, and it was a little module that vibrated. The vibrating had a distinct effect in that water. The, vib the vibration genuinely seemed to be making stuff uh, churn about a bit. What do we have? We have... Ooh. Glue. We have the little pump, the little air pump. Is the circuit board wet yet? It's not. Is the, This is wet, though. The pump's wet. The inside the case is... Wet. Okay, so uh, nothing's waterproof. Uh, the circuit board. Tell you what, I'll take a little picture of the circuit board and we can explore it together. Let's explore the circuitry. It starts with the ubiquitous 8-pin microcontroller. Paduk could be anything, I'm not really sure. The other 8-pin chip is an H-bridge driver and it's driving the spin output, the bit that actually makes this spin in one direction and then spin the other. I didn't have any joy getting it to stir the clothing at all. I have to say, it's probably because it's going quite slowly. They used to sell things called uh, twin tubs in the UK, which were washing machines that were designed for poor families or people with limited space, but they were very popular. They, they, they had very small tubs, and they, one of them just had one of these sat at an angle, and it would spin at very high speed, and therefore it would just really whip the stuff around because the, the bowl was actually shaped for it to be spun like that. Others had the sort of rotating agitators. There were loads of different techniques. The other tub in the twin tub was the spin dryer that basically you put a bucket under a spout, put the clothing in, put the lid down. In fact, it was just a rubber disc went into it on top of the clothing and it would spin it and spin all the water out. They were very, very simple washing machines, but they did the job. Um, I've digressed already. So the processor can control these four LEDs. There's something a bit weird. There's one pin going out to all the LED commons, and three of them in one polarity, and one of them is the, un the other polarity. I'll explain that in a moment. When it wants to turn on the vibrator, it switches on this 2300 MOSFET. If it wants to do this, the agitator in our direction, it uses the H-bridge driver, and it uses a little Y1 transistor to switch on the air pump because it's quite low current. The button here has a pull-down resistor to the negative rail, so the button pulls up to the positive rail when you push it. And then there's a little uh, decoupling capacitor, which would have been better mounted really close to this microcontroller, but isn't. It's quite strange how they've done that. But anyway, they did. I think it's just a lack of space. But they've squeezed as much as possible out that little tiny 8-pin microcontroller. Let's take a look at the schematic. So if we take a look at the schematic, and this is the point, actually, you know what, I could have brought that little exhibit in there. I'll bring this little unit in, and you can see at the moment it's in automatic mode. Now, if I turn the power off, and I turn it back on again, it will go into standby mode. It's just like flashing the little indicator light so to show I'm ready to uh, try and purge the water out the inside of my wrecked guts. Uh, then you push the button, and it goes into manual mode, no, sorry, automatic mode, where it's going through all the things, and the other LEDs are not lighting. Uh, but if you put it into individual modes, like, for instance, that is just purely the spin mode, every so often you'll see that this LED will dim. And when it dims, that's actually you turning the motor off, and then there's a pause, and then you'll see it ramp up in intensity. Watch this little ramp up. Very slight ramp up. That was the other polarity. That's the motor stopping and spin the other direction. Uh, it does ramp up. Likewise, if I switch to the vibrator, you'll see that ramps up. It just didn't come on at full intensity, it ramped up. The reason for that is they're using positive modulation to avoid sudden, the sudden inrush current to the motor, causing the uh, USB power supply to trip out on overcurrent. The other option there is um, no ramping up for that, it's straight on for that one. That is the air bubbler, which I just don't understand at all, but they did it. Uh, I should turn that off just in case the power supply is making that high-pitched whistling noise that some of you mentioned, but which I can't hear because I'm apparently too old. The power supply comes in here, 
And the first thing that happens when it comes in is the USB cable, there's a capacitor under here. So there's the positive of the capacitor, there's the negative, literally just a uh, those come straight through the pins where that uh, lands on. The reason for that is that you have to decouple the incoming supply. You have to provide a slight reservoir. Motors are incredibly noisy loads. Um, between that little oddly placed capacitor there and that, that tries to protect the processor from instability, from crashing when those motors are running because they can be quite spiky. As they rotate in their brushes, they'll... Uh, continually open and close the circuit. And because it's inductive, it's quite a spiky, noisy thing. So the incoming supply goes to that electrolytic. There's also that little decoupling capacitor. There's the push button. I'll just finish drawing it. The push button that closes the contact, bridges the input to the processor to the positive rail and tells that the button's been pressed. It's normally held to the low negative rail. Another oddity here, the resistors are unmarked. They're just black. There's no number on the resistors. That's the weirdest thing there. I wonder if they're all the same value. Maybe I should have measured that. Um, but that's very strange that they are like that. I doubt they're all the same value. I really have to measure that now, don't I? Bring the meter in. Let's choose a provisional value of about 2k for these. And I shall try and measure these. I'm not sure if other things in the circuit are going to interfere with this. But this one here... is let's say 1k that's going to be 1k as well what about the one feeding the transistor let me just refresh my mind here that that is so tiny so this is the one feeding the transistor base uh, let's get this out the way of the meter shall we that'd be a good idea that's also 1k what about the switch pull up? I get the feeling they're all going to be 1k. Yep. And even the MOSFET pull down. Oh, oh, hold on. This may be bridging out. Uh, right, okay. Not, not getting any luck there. Unless that's an unusually, that's a much higher value, but I don't, maybe I'm just not connecting properly here. No, I think that's a higher value. Let's uh, go up there. I would have expected that to be about 10k. 4.7k. Okay, so they're not all the same value. That's a bit strange that they're unmarked like that. So this is the only resistor that's a different value. That's strange. Right, uh, continuing on from that distraction. The <clears throat> LEDs. The button is pressed. It detects the button being pressed because it pulls that input to the positive reel. The output to the LEDs are from one of the spare pins. It's basically the last pin because uh, keep in mind there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's all eight pins are used. One input pin. We've got uh, the A and B for the direction of the H bridge. We've got the vibrator output. We've got the air output. And we've got this odd auxiliary LED output. If this goes positive, as it is when you uh, turn the power on, it's blinking that, it's turning that, flashing that positive and off, or positive and negative. It uh, makes this LED blink. When you put it in automatic mode, this goes uh, positive, and that means those other LEDs can't turn on. Only this one can turn on. That just means it's in automatic mode and the automatic LED lights continually while it's doing that. When you switch to another mode, this goes negative and then it enables all the other LEDs because they're just being driven by the same outputs as the uh, motors. In the case of the air motor, it drives the LED, the air output. It uh, also drives this low power Y1 transistor via that 1K resistor. The 4K7, since I know what that is now, if it wants to control the vibrator, uh, it powers that LED. Um, so while the vibrator is running, that's lit. And uh, it's this MOSFET, because it's quite a high load, the vibrator, it's a much bigger motor. It's normally pulled down to the zero volt rail to keep it turned off. But that uh, the output from the process goes straight to the input of the MOSFET and turns it on and uh, switches that motor on. Lighting the LED for the spin is a bit more complicated. There are two outputs, A and B. If you take 
A high, the motor will go in one direction. If you put, take B high, the motor will go in the other direction. If you take both high, it won't work. If it take both low, it won't work. So what they do is when they want to run it, they take take them either both low or both high when it's not needed. But when they need it to go in a direction, the B will be low, A will be high, and the motor will run in one direction and vice versa. But either way round, those motor, the motor polarity will either be positive, negative, or negative, positive, depending on the direction it's going. That's why there's a diode from both terms of the motor going to the spin LED so that no matter the polarity of the motor, it actually makes that LED light as well. And that's why the LED does go out when it changes direction and then ramps up again when it uh, starts up again. And that's the circuitry. It's a bit strange. It's, it's functional. Uh, the unit is... In my opinion, it's a piece of crap. It didn't really do the job. I think it'd be better with just a big vibrator. Uh, imagine putting that in the sink kitchen, the hotel sink, if you were traveling. Um, it might work okay in suitably shaped and sized tubs, but it did let water in, which is not a good thing for electronics. The little air pump's quite nice. I'll keep the little air pump. The little vibratory thing. Uh, yeah, if you were using a vibrating clothes uh, agitator, Oh, these just rotate. These weights actually just rotate on those shafts. That's that's a bit terrible. Uh, so if you actually rotated them, they'd both be on the same side and rotating more forcefully, I suppose. Otherwise, they'd be counter-rotating, uh, vibrating. All right, okay. But if you did uh, use that in your hotel room and you had the vibration the sink just going... Brrrr, you'd probably have old men knocking the door going... Hello, can I come in and watch you use your vibrator? So that's probably not a good idea. So uh, ultimately, if you need to wash your clothes while you're traveling, by all means use the hotel sink. I'd recommend just taking some wash-up liquid or something like that, or your shampoo like I usually do. And just if you've got small items you want to wash on a more regular basis like socks, I just wash them in the sink and then just hang them over a radiator to dry. But uh, this thing, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it. Um, it also, every time it snagged the shirt, I noticed it would occasionally make clicking plasticky noises. It's, it's not going to last. It's just a waste of space in your luggage. But there we go. It was well worth taking to bits anyway. It was more entertaining than anything else. And there are a few random bits that I will salvage out of it. But I will not be using it. But a neat device to take apart anyway.